Hi, welcome to Seaside Quilting Tutorials. My name is Terry, and today I'm working on a, a 4th of July table runner. I had planned on doing this ahead of time, but it's been a crazy month. There's been so much going on that I really haven't had the time. And so I'm kind of scrambling a little bit at the last minute. And I'm doing a little bit of a prelude to my um, actual video that I started yesterday um, because it started out to be one thing and turned into a different table runner. So let me explain that. I started out with the idea that I was going to make um, a pinwheel 4th of July table runner. And as I was putting, as I was showing in the video how to put your half square triangles together in different ways to make different blocks, I changed my mind. I saw this uh, chevron look uh, by putting them together and it's going to be um, more efficient for me to quilt it a little quicker and also uh, to combine it with my um, Feather Master class because I haven't been able to practice due to um, so many events this month and being sick off and on uh, since, actually since April, and I've got another cold coming um, again with a sore throat and head all full of fluid and whatnot. So I'm not sure if it's allergies or if it's cold. They both feel about the same, so I'm not sure which I have, but either way, I don't feel all that great. But I want to get this done um, because on 4th of July, we have several tables set up and I'd like our main table to have a nice table runner to go down it. And we just use those uh, fold up plastic tables. Excuse me for the little uh, barking in the background. That's our new uh, uh, Chow Chow puppy, Zena, Zena uh, the princess warrior. She's a little demon right now with the little teeth biting everything and trying to chew everything but she's adorable nonetheless. Um, so anyways, I'm doing this little bit of a prelude just so that you'll understand um, a little more of what happened as I went along. So I started out with one concept and what I was going to name my table runner and then ended up with something else and I'll have to figure out a new name for it because uh, it's a different design <laughs> altogether. So I'm going to cut this off. I'm going to have to do a little bit of editing uh, with my video to cut out the beginning of um, the one that I started. And I'm hoping that this uh, makes it more explainable. There won't be any, um, there won't be any uh, downloadables for this one. It's just I'm sharing a project with you that I'm making uh, for myself. I uh, started out with, I was putting away some scraps and I ran into um, some five inch charm squares uh, that are red, white, and blue. <clears throat> and that's how the whole thing started. And now it's turned into this. So let me go ahead and um, pause this one so I can continue along where we stopped off with our table runner. So my idea started out, I had um, actually a pre-cut pack set aside. I don't know how long I've had it. I've had it for quite a few years now, but it's an easy pattern and it's not hard to cut the pieces out. So all you need is 14 uh, five inch squares of red, 14 squares of blue five inch squares and then you will need 28 of the white five inch squares and you can it can be a pre-cut pack it can be uh, just picking out a red white and a blue and just pre-cutting your five inch squares they don't take all that long to cut them out and then we're going to take um, you'll do half, you know, your, all your red and then all your blue with your white. And we're going to make half square triangles. So I'm going to take a red and a white and I'm going to put them right sides together. 
and we're going to make our half square triangles. So I've already made my center line diagonally from one corner to the next corner. I'm sewing in scant quarter inch with my machine with 2.0 stitch length. And I'm gonna draw a quarter of an inch on each side of that center line. And I'm going to stitch on the lines on the side of the center. I will not sew on the center line. That's going to be my cut line. So I'm only going to sew on the line on the left side and the one on the right side. And I've already pre-done quite a few ahead of time because I like to chain piece these. It makes it much quicker. I have done a tutorial on how to do um, eight of these at a time with different sizes. And you can download the uh, PDF sheet on in our group called Seaside Quilting on Facebook under the Files tab. And it gives you the equations for whatever size half square triangle you want to make, what size you uh, need to start out with fabric. And there is a tutorial on how to make eight at a time. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sew on each side of that center line. So each time I do this, of course, I'm getting two half square triangles. Now you can use your rotary cutter and a ruler or just a pair of scissors and you're going to cut down that center line. Okay, so those are almost done. And we'll go ahead and we'll press these. Okay, so those are all pressed. We can set this aside. So my original idea in making this, because I need something that goes up really quick, because I also need to um, quote it afterward. So my original idea was to do 
sort of like a pinwheel. I always have to think about how my next one goes in. There we go. And then, well, you know, I could play with these forever and I always mess them up when I'm trying to do them online. I don't know how I always do this to myself. see there we go <laughs> I know if I spun it enough times I was going to get the effect I was looking for so my idea originally was to take and switch these I'm just gonna copy my other one now that I have the whole thing spun around the way that I want it So this was my original idea, was to do a blue on this side, then a red on this side, and then I'll do a red here, and then a blue here, and switch them off and on, um, going all the way down. So I would put these two pieces together, just flipping this over, right side to right side, and I would sew my seam a scant quarter of an inch going down through right here. Oops, just trying to make sure I'm getting this in the camera. So then once that's sewn, I can just open it, you know, open it up, do my pressing, and then do the same down here, flipping this over right sides together and do your scant quarter of an inch. Once you have both of your rows together then you can combine your two rows by folding this over right side to right side and then sew your quarter of an inch seam here and i was going to do that on all of the blocks to create my table runner but this is also an opportunity to take a look at well what else could i do with my blocks because with half square triangles, you have a lot of different options on creating different designs with those same half square triangles. So this would be a square in a square. But I could also do it so that the color goes on the inside like that still a square in a square but changes the look of it and as you put them together they create if you're using all the same block it creates sub designs as you keep adding your blocks together you could also do um, a pinwheel one and then do a square in a square then do a square in the square down here and then a pinwheel over here and keep offsetting them. You could do, instead of having it go uh, blue, red, then red, blue, you could have one whole side be uh, blue and white and then the other side be red and white all the way down with your blocks. Then you could even create a design where it goes like this or like that so you get a whole different design just by moving your half square triangles around but then you could also let me see the other day I had a neat there we go I always have to think when I'm causes me a lot of extra thinking. So you can create a sub design by putting them together like this 
and then do your blues let me see the same way as this So just by moving them around and changing how I want my blocks to be, I could create a whole new design in this way. But you could also switch these around so that the color is going toward the inside. So it would go like this. And then all the white being on the outside would create its own design. So then that creates like its own sub design. So you have like your colors in here that are doing that design and then the white being together is doing the same. So if you put enough of these blocks together, you create, uh, create a nice design within the quilt just by changing around how you're going to do your blocks. But then there's also, if you wanted to do something like flying geese style, you could do this, which is kind of like an hourglass, but then you could spin these around Did I just do the same thing I did? Oh my goodness Shoot me now. Here we go So you can get kind of like a flying geese effect by having them go like this and all pointing in the same direction. And as you go around, as you could use, this makes a nice border when done with a smaller half square triangle where it goes all the way around and follows the direction of the quilt that they're going in. And then of course you could spin them around like this and you could have your color changing so your colors on the inside here but on the outside up here and it will create another new sub design almost like an arrow pointing in a direction and we'll continue to do so as you go you know do your strips of them uh, that you want to put together so it's really just a matter of what you're trying to get for a look but there's many, many, many things that you can do with your half square triangles just by playing with them on a table and spinning them around, putting them together in different ways to see what designs you can create. And I also look at it not just from, you know, the uh, point of looking at it from piecing perspective but I like to think about what am I going to quilt for a design on this if it's put together this way so if it was put together like this so that all the white I can follow the whole entire thing across I probably would do some feathering in there and have it go follow that pattern around and then do maybe a different design in each of those two corners and then this triangle here. But then as I put more together and see more of the design that's being creative, created rather, I may change my mind on how I would quilt the colored part. But I do have in my mind that if they were put together like this, then I would follow along and do a feathering through this area. And originally my whole idea was to do that whole pinwheel thing. 
And if I can get these back together so that they look like a pinwheel, I'll be doing really good. Let me see. This is where I always get myself stuck. <laughs> I think it's this one. There we go. So if I was to put them together like this, then this ends up creating, once again, a whole different design. <coughs> but I could sit here and I could play with these all day long and never actually get done. But I was thinking about the pinwheel because of being uh, 4th of July. Uh, I really love pinwheels being outside uh, during that season, you know, with the red, white, and blue on them. And then when the breeze hits the pinwheels, you know, they spin going down across the driveway. So this kind of reminded me of that. Although I'm really kind of liking that other design that we just put together where we had the white uh, going in that direction. So... Now I'm really stuck on which way I want to put them together. I think I'm going to um, go ahead with my original plan on this and do my pinwheel table runner. And I'm going to offset, I believe I'm going to offset the colors, but first I'm going to put my blocks together so I have... You know, my first block will be those two rows. My second block, this t these two rows. And I'm going to keep putting them all together until I have all my squares together. And then I'll decide, do I want to do blue on and white on one side and then red and white on the other side? Or do I want to offset them? And I won't know that until I have all of my squares put together. So your first objective is to make all your half square triangles. Then open them and press them as I showed just a couple minutes ago. Do that with all 14 red and all 14 blue. So there will be 28 white and you'll be doing the right sides together, of course. So go ahead and do those, make up your blocks and then um, We'll take a look at putting the rows together and how we want to do it. Do we want to offset them? Do we want all one row? That's an individual decision that you'll have to make yourself. And you'll also have to decide how do you want to, to put these together by spinning them around and creating um, your different designs to do that. So you could do like this, like we were showing, or have all the white going to the outside instead of the color. And then you could do um, a design like this as well, where you have the flying geese look going all in one direction, and then think about your long arming. Um, in your triangles, how you would do that. So I'm gonna do a couple more minutes thinking um, on my pattern. I'm really liking the pinwheel, but then I'm thinking about what would I uh, quilt in it. Now I'm starting to really like that whole thing where I had the, the design so that, let me see. Switching these around. I even kind of like doing like this. Okay, I'm going to have to play with them for a couple more minutes, and then I'll make a decision on how I want my 4th of July table runner to come out. I was stuck on the pinwheel idea in the beginning. Um, now I might have changed my mind, so I'm going to think about that while you're making your half square triangles. So once you've decided which way you want your half square triangles to go to make up whichever um, 
block. So I decided to go with this chevron look, which is almost like you're flying geese. So I decided to go with this because I'm really liking the design that it will make with the white where, you know, I'll get that shape for feathering in there and then I'll decide what I'm going to do with the other parts. So I'm at the next stage where now that I have my squares made, how do I want them to go? Do I want to uh, switch them back and forth? so that I'm switching my blue and my red and alternating my rows, which I think that has a really cool effect to it. And I could continue to do that and there will be uh, seven blocks on each side. So it will be fairly long which is good for those um, fold-out tables uh, that we use at different events. So the other choice that I have is to have a blue and white side and a red and white side. So it would come out like this huh and I'll probably play with this a couple of times and think about it I kind of like this but I almost think that I'm liking the colors being switched on each side hmm. yeah I kind of like that because it gives you that red-blue effect back and forth instead of just all in one strip. So I'm kind of liking this. So my next step, now that I have all my blocks put together, and when I press these, um, I made sure that it, these two rows were pressed in opposite directions so that they would butt up against each other. And I'm doing the same, and I will flatten these out these are kind of thick. I can either uh, fold these open and press it open or leave it this way and I'll just put my quilters clapper. I'm going to set this table runner up after I've sewn it together onto my ironing board and I will, I have about three quilters clappers now so I can do three seams at a time and I'll press these and I'll put the clapper on and I'll leave them on uh, for a couple of hours and then I'll switch them until I have all the blocks done. And they'll come out really pretty darn flat so it'll make it a lot easier when I go to long arm these. But with the design that I'm thinking of doing, um, that may not even be a problem because I'll be coming down through over this way. So, But I will flatten them out so that they look really sharp and um, will make it a lot easier for the long arming. So now as I've pressed these, like I said, I have my seams, um, going in opposite directions. The, and I'm going to have to fix those now that I've decided, uh, to put them on opposite sides and go back and forth. I will have to change, um, some of these seams so that as I'm putting them together, they'll be able to butt up against each other. So like this one, they're both going in opposite directions. So they'll butt up against each other very, very nicely. And I just need to check to make sure that as I go through that each one is going to do that. So the next thing that I'm doing is I'm taking one block from each side of my row and I'll fold them over right side to right side. I'll make sure that that center seam that each one is going in the opposite direction, just like with each row, they went in the opposite direction. And that just makes it easier to put that seam together and have it match up well. And that's where I will pin on each one of them 
to make sure that I have them nicely lined up. That one looked like it went through well, and I check it inside, and it is. And then I'll clip this end down here to keep that going together and not shifting on me. And then I will sew my quarter, my scant quarter inch seam all the way down this side. And I will do that going up through until I've completed all of my rows. And then once I've completed all of my rows, I'm going to do the same thing, bringing each row to each other, making sure that each row that the seam is going in the opposite direction. So the top row, have it go to the left, the next row to the right, then to the left, and keep continuing to do that all the way down when you press these open. And then you'll take each one of your rows, once these two are sewn together and these two are sewn together, I will be able to press my seam going in opposite directions and then fold this down onto this one right side to right side. And then there will be a quarter inch, a scant quarter inch seam all the way from one end all the way to the other. And I will do that until all of my rows are put together first this way and then going down. And then that will get the center, all the center part of my table runner done. And then we'll come back and take a look at adding borders and uh, deciding how wide do I want my, ta my table runner to be. And then deciding uh, how many borders I want and uh, how to add them on. Okay, so here we are, we're back with our table runner. We started off as, um, this was going to uh, be pinwheel blocks. So it had that nice um, pinwheel effect. And <clears throat> as I was putting the blocks together, um, it turned into me liking this uh, chevron look um, in the quilt, which will be nice for my feathering um, to go along and just feather each one of these sections and it will be quicker for me to quilt it and get it ready for uh, this upcoming weekend. We have two events. We have um, a 20 year retirement uh, party for uh, a Marine who's um, retiring now and um, going on to a new adventure. And so we have that on Saturday. And then of course on Tuesday, we have 4th of July, which is a big gathering. All of our neighbors uh, get together and um, my husband does a fireworks show for everybody and we just have a lot of fun together and then things calm down for a little bit or they're supposed to we'll see what happens okay so we have the main part put together we started out with uh, 14 blue five inch squares 14 red five inch squares and 28 white five inch squares. <clears throat> we made our half square triangles. We put our blocks together. Now I showed you different formations of how you could put your half square triangles together. They don't have to be my choice. They could be the pinwheel that we started off with or they could be any variation of them whatsoever. We also talked about um, whether or not we were gonna do one side, one um, side all blue and one all red or we, we were going to offset them uh, with these particular blocks I thought they were looking really sharp by offsetting them instead of having um, two separate rows um, being two separate colors I think this blends out better this is um, quilt shop quality uh, charm squares <clears throat> however these are not uh, fabric that we personally sell at Seaside. I've had these uh, squares sitting 
in my collection for several years. I can't even remember when I bought them, um, but I've had them with the plan to make a table runner with them, and finally I'm getting around to it. And I had some novelty fabric um, laying around left over from um, several years ago that I think just the coloring goes well with the charm squares. And um, once again, this is usually I use fabric that I purchased from Seaside Quilting Supplies because I know the quality of the fabric. I know the only by name brands and I'm always confident with that with their product and I'm confident with their salesmanship that I'm never shorted um, any yardage. They have great customer service and take care of any problems that arise. However, there are times once in a while when I do purchase elsewhere. Um, maybe they don't carry the line or whatever, or I just have some stuff left over that I didn't donate. Now, um, last year I donated like four boxes and several bags of scraps and whole yards of fabric that I don't use anymore um, because of the quality of it. But there is a little bit that I've kept um, because the 4th of July type fabrics are hard to find and um, I want to use them up. So anyways, like I said, normally that's what I use. However, we do have several uh, fabrics on hand with um, red, white, and blue that you could combine together. And you may have already even purchased some. And there was some beautiful uh, shells that were um, a red on red and a blue on blue. And then even a white on white um, shell fabric that if they all three were combined together would make a beautiful um, 4th of July tabletop along with some belly uh, dots fabric that was um, red and then there's some blue and um, you could just use a white to offset it with the white. So anyways, that's my explanation of that. So now that we have our table runner put together this ends up being seven blocks long um, because I wanted it long for the table that we're going to use it on. It's one of those long uh, fold out uh, plastic tables that we all pretty much use during um, gatherings and whatnot. And I wanted this to be nice and long to go down through the center of it. So now I'm at adding my border and to do the borders, I'm, I measured the length on both sides <clears throat> and I've already pre-cut my fabric. I've already added one side of the border. I will now add the other side of the border and then I will re-measure my width once I have both sides of my border. And um, I went with the length first which is typically what I do as I go with the length of the table uh, top runner or uh, quilt or whatever it is that I'm making. So I did the, the width, the length first rather. I'm gonna sew on the other side in a moment. And then I will come back, I will press this open with my seams going out toward the um, border and then I will come back and I will measure my width from side to side and I will cut my next pieces to go on each end and then take a look at it and see if I want to do another border or if I'm going to leave it as is. I haven't decided yet. This is one of those projects that I'm just making on the fly as I go, but I wanted to be able to share it with you um, because we don't always have to have a pattern. We can just start out with an idea and make our projects. Now I did uh, post earlier, like a week or two ago, um, a PDF file that shows if you want to make eight half square triangles at the same time, what size fabric would you need? And I also did a tutorial on YouTube, which would be very helpful with actually um, making one of these because you could make them um, pretty much all your half square triangles um, in, two, you know, in a couple of shots and make it a lot faster. So let me go ahead. I'm going to sew on the next border on the length and then I'm going to measure my width 
and I'll add my border to the end and then we'll come back and we'll take a look at it and see if it's going to need another border or if we're going to leave it as is. Okay, so I'm all done putting on the border that I was going to put on. I had thought about putting the second one on, but I feel like the table runner is going to be plenty long enough and plenty wide enough for the center of the table. I don't want it too wide because I don't want it to be hanging over the edges on the sides. If it does on end to end, that's fine. So by using this design, I've ended up with a nice um, chevron type design going on. Although now that I'm taking pictures of it, I realize that <clears throat> I put my last two rows on the wrong way. And that happens when you're looking at something in a picture instead of, <clears throat> excuse me, um, just looking at it. So isn't that something? So it's always good to take a picture of your project and take a look at it. So I'm just going to take this part out real quick, flip these around, re-sew them in, and then re-sew my border on and I'll be all set to go to quilt this. But I wanted to show it to you. Um, now you could have these go in opposite directions. If I would have done the same thing up here, then I would have created a sub um, design in here. Um, now that I'm looking at it, I'm wondering if I do want to actually do that right down here you see i'd have to leave two rows have this go in the opposite direction i might just do that take it out here and put flip these around and put these together and have it come out um, a sub design so that i have uh, two diamonds going in each end of it and then the rest will be um, chevrons <clears throat> for me to stitch my feathers in. I'm really liking that idea. So I'm glad that I did make that mistake so that I could see um, that I'm liking that being in there. And we'll change it up some so it's not exactly um, the same going all the way down. Way down. It gives it a little bit um, more of a design within a design. So I'm really liking that. Okay, so I'm going to take this apart, go ahead and finish it, and then I'm gonna start my quilting so I can get this done and have it ready for this weekend. So anyways, that's just some of the process of how I go about uh, starting with an idea of something and working it along as I go and thinking it through as I go. Um, not always do I use a pattern, although quite often I do. <clears throat> Sometimes I just like to make things on the fly. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna fix this and then put it back together and I will be all set to do my long arming, which I will post a picture in um, our Facebook group called Seaside Quilting when it's all done being quilted and bound. So anyways, until next time, I wish you happy sewing.